Hi, Sisterin here. I wanted to make a quick video teaching you guys how to kill the Maven and just the like few things I saw and uh, just how to get there and stuff like that. So whenever you are doing either one of the special fights in the middle of the Atlas, so this is being able to fight, you know, the, the four Shaper Guardians, the four Elder Guardians, the four um, Cortex Guardians, four Breach Swords, or, you know, the Feared, which is the bottom one there with Cheyula, etc. And, and this is pretty rippy. You'll get splinters from all of these fights. Um, from these fights, you see, I think the lowest I've gotten is like three up to five. Um, and you get a bigger chance of more splinters, the, the harder you roll the encounters. You also get up to two splinters. I think somebody said you can drop three if you roll them really well, uh, from doing these 10 fights. And then once you have 10 splinters, like here, you get a Maven's writ and you can go face the Maven. So that's what this video is going to be about. I'm just going to teach you guys like how to kill the Maven and, uh, what, what I picked up on during the fight. This is me doing it on my Detonate Dead Inquisitor, and I think that's one of the best builds for the fight. Detonate Dead is extremely strong, and I'll explain why throughout, because, you know, that's what we're going to be watching. And I'll talk a little bit about, like, DD-specific stuff. I think it's a really good fight, and uh, I'll talk about all the moves, how they work, what they do, etc. You can see here, I have two Heist Spectres with me. They're, like, very, very tanky. And then I go, and I have, uh, I have something I call Spectre Banks. I have loads of videos on that with I, I other high health uh, monsters that I bring into the instance. This is a detonate dead specific tactic where you uh, you want more of like your high health strong corpses in the instance than uh, than like low low monsters. You notice this particularly high on for example the cortex fight where the only monster you can desecrate are the ones you bring in and since we only bring in the crab for the cortex I basically one shot the cortex. Whereas Shaper, Elder, Uber Elder, there's so many monsters there that we have way, way less damage. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just bringing the Spectres in and then I'm killing them to make sure that um, the Maven doesn't try to target one of my Spectres or whatever uh, and accidentally shoot me. You run up here and uh, it starts the fight and the first stage is pretty easy. It's basically like teaching you some of the mechanics over time. So... Here she can do, um, th that is like her simple auto attack that does virtually nothing. The, the brain that circles around that's gonna shoot out these projectiles, they will start rotating and they'll explode. They were hitting my character for like somewhere between like 2 to two to 3k, but I, I regen very fast. Now, at the same time, you see that she's also blasting me with um, these. They also hit for like 3 to 4k each. Very, very dangerous. I saw um, the people playing like Earthquake. And builds like that were struggling quite a lot more than I was. This build has like so much light leech, so much regen that I, I'm just like topping myself up. It I literally cannot kill me. Um, but you can see that there's a lot happening in this fight. Um, the brain will also fire out these projectiles. They're like kind of like ball lightning. They'll like tick very, very rapidly and, and hurt. So sometimes she will say stand still and then she's gonna do this like cheese crater move. I don't I don't know what to call it. She'll like She'll do that, and, and that actually hurts a large amount. We've seen a lot of other kills, and people were really getting hurt by this beam, so you do want to avoid it, and even though I can fully tank it, I am avoiding on, the, on this, because you want to avoid scenarios where you're getting hit by multiple things. We can see another thing that happens as well that's very important. We don't see it that well here, and I'll show you more importantly later. It'll be easier to see, but you'll see that those balls here, it will, uh, that's what like places the, the damage over time effect on the ground. Uh, it'll be easier to see later because we didn't really see the brain shooting them out. There's no voice line for this happening. There you see the balls being shot out. So the brain shoots them out. It's three balls. And they they stand here for a second and then turn into the projectiles that follow you. Now what I do is I make sure to place them, similar to how you would do the shaper balls, uh, place them in one spot because the degen doesn't stack and you don't want to litter the arena. We've seen a lot of players panic and, and like basically like Bob Ross the entire arena where it's a nice painting, happy little clouds here, happy little clouds there. And you don't want to Bob Ross your arena because it slows you and it's going to make the memory game really hard. This is the most optimal spot. I basically do like 20 degrees to the right of the exact bottom of the arena. So like basically where I'm doing it right now. Now once you've killed the first stage of the Maven, the brain is going to come in and land. This is going to one-shot anything that's still inside. So make sure you pay attention to where the platform is. It's rotating and you'll uh, just run inside after the blast is over. Now, pay attention to the beam here. So you can see the beam starts and that beam, if that touches you, it stops all leech, it stops all regen. 
And if you're on like if you're on righteous fire, your life would just go out. Woo! Um, on this build, it's really really bad. I'm a regen based build, so really really bad. Um, I I would recommend uh, if you're on hardcore and you get hit by that, very often it's better off to just instantly log out. Now, in this fight, what this does is it's basically like a gauntlet type thing where it's like you have to fight monsters while fighting the boss. This can spawn, to the best of my knowledge, every single map boss in the game. That means that you can get some really, really bad ones. You can get the race course boss, which does reflect. I think this is insane that that, that can spawn here because you, you like on hardcore, you probably just should have reflect immunity then, which is a very big investment. Uh, and it cuts down a lot on the builds that like really like should be doing the fight on hardcore. Softcore, it's not a big issue because you're probably very rarely going to spawn the race course boss. But we've already seen Terrans die to this. Other than that, other things that are bad that can spawn, you could get like Tolman or something that does detonate dead. And that would be really bad for a build like this where I have high level corpses. Now, thankfully, this fight is over extremely quick quickly for my build. Because you'll see once I kill one of the monsters, you'll see this thing takes like a huge chunk of damage. Now, it is actually very, very tanky, but because of the, the unique monsters that the brain spawns, they have so much HP that as soon as I get to detonate one of them, usually at least all the others will die that are in range, and the brain itself will kind of insta-pop. So, in oh one of the God, stages, I basically, like, insta-pop. Now, here we're being introduced to the Maven memory game. So, the way this works, um, and uh, there's a few things here that people haven't picked up on. Actually, something Steel Mage almost died to, and he did not know it until I told him afterwards. He was like, oh shit, I didn't know that. But if you see here, it, she will highlight the platforms. So now I have to stand here, here, and then move over here. Now, there is a really, it's, it'll be easier to explain again later, but you will see the expanding circle in the middle, right? This circle here, that expands at a steady pace while the circles are being green. If you go into the red, you don't instantly die, but the circle will keep expanding until it hits the end. Now, something a lot of people didn't realize is that it, let's say that I run through here, right? I run through the circle, which is just a degen at this point, but I hit the green on this while sitting inside the circle. Well, what a lot of people don't know is that the circle detonates for 72,000 damage when, um, when, when you complete the last one. And that is really bad because a lot of people would hear flame dash right there and be a big risk of being inside the circle when it finishes. This happened to me during one of my practice runs. And initially I thought, you know, all you have to do is like perfectly clear the memory game and you're good. But you do also have to perfectly clear it and not be inside when it finishes. And you can hear like the boom when it detonates. Here again, we see like the balls coming out uh, and I, I put them down there. The, uh, the beam that goes across the arena does quite a lot of damage. I think it was hitting me for like 12k, 11k. It left me like 1 or 2k left. And you can see like everything here does a lot of damage. She's just going to ask me to stand still. Now I have so much damage that I basically like instant this phase. And you can see that I'm like trying hard to like make sure I put them all in like very very close proximity. Because I don't want to litter my arena. Here again, just the same boss phase. We'll, we'll have more bosses this time. And I do try to like flame dash exactly through without getting hit by the beam because I want the, the monsters to be like close to the brain when they die. And there you see that as soon as like they both died, it just insta pop the fight. You might have seen other people doing this uh, with other builds where the this stage will actually take a while. So here again, we can see the memory game. It's like. This is something that can like take some practice to get used to, and you can see that I am trying hard to like avoid the middle. More degens coming out, her beam going out, uh, and and this is all like similar to the Awakener, where the first stages are the easy part of the fight. Um, she also does like a um, a pull move where she'll call all of these. From what I understand, that is also a bit of a. Um, I think that's a bit of a soft enraged mechanic where, um, you know, you've been in the fight for so long that there are quite a lot of them stacked up around the arena and she'll use that as an attack. But she doesn't seem to do it this early, at least. Now, this is one of her slams. It's uh, very, very looks similar to the Chevron slam, actually. Um, this does also, to my character, around 12k. And I don't have any crazy resists or anything. I basically just have, like, very, very high raw HP and normal 75 resists. And then I have Fortify.
Stop resisting. Here we go again, where the slam comes out, and you just stand and wait on the platform, and then after the slam, you run inside. Now, do remember that um, after this phase, like, this is all staying here, by the way. So, that's why you have to be so careful. The first time you get to stack, it doesn't matter, because they will reset the arena once for you. But the second time, it's there for the rest of the fight. So, if you, like, put these everywhere and Bob Ross your arena, it's going to be pretty messy. Here you see I flame dash through to try to get this guy close and then like boom like 30% damage and that that does have like a large amount of HP And now comes the hard fight so these beams they're similar uh, That's another move as well But these beams are similar to the beam that was spinning where they completely disable your regen They're also moving and you have to pay attention to these while doing the memory game that like red ball most builds seem to do pretty okay with just face tanking that. It looks pretty scary. Maybe we can kill you on a crit, but I think it only did like 6k or something to me. So here you see, I uh, I get hit by the, the DJN beam. I can show you what the, like, what the icon looks like that. It looks like that, and I instantly log out. There is a DJN icon from the, um, the, the Bob Ross clouds as well. But yeah, here you see the degen, and, and I basically instantly start not regening, and now I'm in danger, so I instantly log out. So, memory game starts. Top, right. Top, left. Top, left. And, and this is very hard, because you have to do this while uh, doing everything. So it can be very, very hard. And here you just like have a very, very normal face, except with all the other added bullshit. There's, uh, there's no more, there's no more of the, um, the, the Bob Ross clouds coming after you in this fight. You've already, like, made your arena, and now you have to fight in it. So, at least some of the mechanics are gone. Obviously, the, the things floating around the arena is gone. And, um, I found that it's really, really good. Similar to how we've seen Steelmage in the past with Awakener, just tanking the Awakener beam to, like, not have to, like, move through things. Uh, it's very, very good here. If you are able to face tank or out regen most of the mechanics... It's, uh, it, it like, there's so much pressure on a build that has to dodge and avoid the beams and avoid the puddles while doing the memory game. This is a fight that really, really benefits from glass cannon builds where you can just burst down the fight because everything is fairly well telegraphed. So being able to make the fight just last very close, similar to how we've done Uber and Ziri in the past, where people even on hardcore have done glass cannon builds to do Uber and Ziri, just because if you insta the fight, you don't have to deal with the mechanics. It is... Uh, a little bit of that here as well. I have to do one more memory game and then I've killed the Maven. Um, almost managed it there. Top, left, right. Top, left, fuck. And something really, really good to remember for if you do fuck up the memory game, you can log out and then come back in. Like, this is if you see it go red once, you can log out, go back in, and then just hold your invulnerability. Keep that in mind as well. It probably shouldn't be that easy, but, you know, right now it is, so use that to your advantage. Once you've killed the Maven, you don't actually unlock this region, but you do get two points for it. It's a little bit weird. I don't know why GDD have made it this way. Uh, I feel like everything that gives points for the region should also unlock it. Because I did the Maven before doing any of the uh, the sub fights. So I just, I was like, did I forget to click something? Or like, what what is this? And, and this region is very strong. We have another video on that as well. I hope the video about the kill helps you. Let me know if it was well explained, bad explained. I just wanted to like help make Maven easier for people. So this was my DD Inquisitor. It's very, very good for this. I'd say my DD Inquisitor is bad for like Awakener, Shaper, or Elder. But uh, most of the other fights it's really strong for. Especially Cortex is like dead. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Sub if you like the videos. But more importantly, try to die. Less than I do.